Let me start with a small quote. Vedjama Sankara Apandena Sampadeda. These were supposedly the last words of Gautam Bud before he attained his Parinirvana. And ever since, scholars both from the East and from the West have come up with their own interpretations of this original text in Pali. And allow me to pick one interpretation which I think is very apt for all the ideas that are presented today and what I'm going to talk about. And that is manage chaos through diligence. If I could leave behind anything today, and I think you will see that idea resonate, and that is diligence, perseverance is what pays it out. Universe of startups is no different. It constructs, deconstructs, reconstructs. We as humans are here to persevere through diligence towards our intended goals and deliverables. I'm Naveen Garg, co-founder at a startup called NLP Core. We are a natural language processing, machine learning, and AI-based platform building a collaborative task management product, namely MyTasks, that brings together project-related information from documents, email messages, and chat messages alike, making project management more effective. I'm super excited and humbled and honored to be here, share the stage with many of the esteemed audience and speakers. And allow me to share my experiences and my learnings by building software products that are deployed and used world over. When it comes to running a startup, building a project, I will distill it down to three key ingredients. And these will resonate with many of the ideas you heard today. And these are put simply product, process, and people. I'm sure you know you have been to many of the marketing classes. And back in the days, those were four Ps of marketing. And now there are seven Ps of marketing. And many of these product definitions include you know, people and process under the umbrella definition of the product. Allow me to take these three and keep them apart and share my learnings and experiences across them. Product, put simply, is those WH questions that someone brought up earlier on. Who is it for? What are their needs? How does it, the product, serve those needs? Who would pay for it? How much would it cost? When will it be ready? And equally importantly, how does it compete in the marketplace? By looking at and answering any of these questions, you could come up with a very well-defined and articulated product definition. It's important to note that this definition applies equally well to an internal deliverable or just as well to a packaged product that you either ship to a customer or deploy in the cloud. Also, as a team member, member and a team leader, you should be aware of your minimally viable product. That is, you know, what are the utmost, most important features for you, minimal features that you need to have, and what are its unique selling points. Lastly, this definition throughout the life cycle of the product, that is from its inception, its release, its maintenance, its retirement or reinstatement for that matter, can change at any point of time. And as you heard today, as a part of reinventing yourself, don't, do not fight that change. Be ready to embrace it, re-examine, re-validate, but do so when you have new data or new evidence. That is, a plan is a plan. You change it only when you have new data. Let's talk about process. It's all about diligence. A set of repeatable steps that you can rinse, reapply to any deliverable and drive it towards its meaningful conclusion. To begin with, you chunk it up, your deliverable, into 
if you are a waterfall model proponent into milestones, if you have preference for agile methodologies, these would be sprints. Either you're managing the scope or you're managing the time intervals. Either ways, make sure you have a well laid out plan for that chunk. What do I mean by that? That is, if there are feature sets, make sure you actually have spec those out. You don't have to write thesis describing those features. This could be simply UI mockups. This could be storyboards. Or this could be a bullet list of items that you want to build on those features. Along with that, make sure you have a design document of how you're going to build those features. Equally important is having a test plan. Make sure your engineers, your developers are actually writing test cases as they are building the product, building those features. We have something called CICD, that is Continual Integration, Continual Development. What that means is not only your developers are building individual features, the entire subset of the features, that is your half-baked product, you build it continually during its implementation phase. You test this continually. And as you find bugs or code defects in this half-baked product, those become your top priority defects that must be fixed before any new line of code is written. What it does is improve overall quality of the pro product continually. Of course, in theory, this works great. If every software or a startup ran like that, we will all would have successfully shipped the products. Let me digress a bit and talk about a couple of anecdotes. Now, this will date me here. In the early 90s, Microsoft had a product called Windows 3.1, Windows for Word Groups. Bill Gates then decided to hire a team from DEC, helmed by a personality named David Cutler. I'm sure you can find it in Wikipedia these days now. We started a, building a new product called Cairo. And in one of those early, you know, famous Bill G review meetings, you know, we presented, or Dave Cutler's team presented, its new Windows experience. And one of the senior executives, Brad Silverberg was his name. He looked at that experience and he said, we can run with this. He took that experience, took the DOS-based Windows operating system, slapped them together, he started a new project called Chicago. If you look at the distance of Redmond, Seattle, where Microsoft is based, versus Cairo in Egypt, versus Chicago in Illinois, you can imagine the scale down of ambitions the project Chicago had, and the amount of ridicule it faced from the Cairo team. But as the history would have it, that Chicago is what Windows 95 was. And I don't have to tell you what Windows, type, Windows 95 meant for what Microsoft is today. That's a big company. That's my past. Even for our very small startup, we have a very small technology which can parse PDF documents and extract information blocks. One of our customers took very liking to this technology. And they said, you know what? You know, we have this challenge. We have these insurance agents, and we need to actually attract a lot more insurance policies, existing policies, or relapse lapse policies, and generate new policies. We would love to feed our existing policies, either from our own company or from our competition, and generate new codes. We were able to actually convert that technology into a shipping product. This is a revenue generating product and has attracted its own VC interest. By the way, back on the story of Cairo, unfortunately, that project never finished. That had its own sad demise. That is to say, in the project journey, you would have failures, you would have opportunities for byproducts. Be willing to entertain those digressions. Nobody has the crystal ball, but applying yourself fully, diligently, going through the process, you would arrive at meaningful conclusions. 
another important part I would like to make is I have often observed and experienced many of the well-articulated, well-planned projects falter because of internal or external influences. Stay the course, alter the course. I'm sure if you get VC funding, you will have a number of voices telling you what to do. You would be asked to work towards unrealistic deadlines or expectations. What's happening at Twitter these days is a classic case in point. My approach always has been to be transparent, be honest, be diligent, and be bold if necessary, but always have data be your guide. What do I mean by that? Is for example, if you have code defects in your product, make sure you know the quantity as well as severity of those defects. If you have performance or scale issues, make sure you have well-defined metric and results from test simulations that tell you where the product is today versus where it needs to be. Armed with this data, you formulate your argument, engage with the right stakeholders, and arrive at a new plan execute upon. And that plan, you make sure you communicate to your crew, your top brass, your clients and partners, that is you manage it bottom, top, and across. Another important aspect of the process diligence is to make sure you engage with your customer early and often, be it customer surveys, be it review of your specifications, storyboards with an advisory board of customers, be it pilot deployments with select customers or dog fooding, that is deployment internally. By the way, we are building our product using it ourselves. In doing so, not only you find out what real world expectations or requirements are from your clients and also find out the glitches the product may have in real world deployment. Lastly, it brings me to most important ingredient, and that is people. You heard some of the excellent stories of what wrong people could do to a company, and it is very true. Especially in the IT industry, hiring is a challenge today. Maybe recent you know, uh, firings may improve that situation, but some of the key attributes that I would part with are number one, you want to have people with the right skills. It doesn't mean that they have the experience or they have the ears behind them, but they have quote unquote the chutpa or the French say je ne sais quoi is that is they are willing to roll up their sleeves, dive deep in the task at hand, be self starters, go getters and find out what is needed to get the job done. Every team goes through the stages of, you know, forming, storming, norming, and performing. And if I look back in my decades of uh, career, both at enterprise and at startups, I would fondly recall some of the projects and the products that I worked upon, and it's always about the people. These people are willing to set aside their personal egos, their self-interest, and their ideological differences to remove any roadblock irrespective of what their roles and ranks are in that team. One thing that I actually do not have on my slide, and I think it's very, very important, and that is make sure your team has their mission aligned. That is, they are working towards the same goals, same deliverables, and it is an often cause of failures. And it has caused me also some of the heartburns in a couple of my startups. Despite best intentions, despite having the right product, despite having the revenues and longevity, we had to suspend our operations because the people did not have the same mission. Smart people, unaligned missions, wrong things can happen. Finally, I would part with a simple quote from Mike Maples, 
who was the CEO of Microsoft, and yes, this goes before Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer, or Satya Nadella took that seat. He was asked once about, you know, what are the key attributes for hiring? How should we go about hiring the right people? His one-line answer was, hire people smarter than you are. They will make sure your company will do the right things when challenges come. That was 30 years ago, and surely he said something right if you look at where Microsoft is today. Let me conclude with a similar saying from another industrial giant, Steve Jobs, who said the same thing. It doesn't make sense for us to hire the smart people and tell them what to do. Instead, they tell us what to do. Thank you.